Hey everybody, how's it going? How Excuse me. Fuck do you think you are to walk by my camera while I'm doing a video? And by my screen. Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. Welcome to today's episode of How You Getting Effed. I'm your host, Louis Rossman. Today we're going to be going over a company called Bamboo. They make 3D printers and they've decided to send out this to their users. Your Bamboo Lab product will automatically search for and download new update packages to provide you with timely update services. These updates are designed to resolve cybersecurity loopholes and prevent new threats. And it is important to accept and install security-related system updates in a timely manner. Due to the importance of these updates, your product may block a new print job before the updates is installed are installed. If you're going to violate people's rights, at the very least don't violate my senses for good English. And we'll immediately provide update notifications to help you understand the related information. Listen, I'm very much against what seems Bamboo is doing. However, that is not what bricking means. Reduce functionality, sure, however far from bricking. Anything that doesn't require internet will work. So that is LAN mode only and SD cards. If you have a home VPN, you can even do LAN mode only abroad from, again, one of the issues here is that from what I'm reading, even if you do want to use a LAN mode that requires authorization, which means logging in and utilizing their servers, which means, again, you see where I'm going here. Many people have workflows that utilize this printer where they don't use Bamboo's tools. They use their own tools. They use other stuff because they don't want to use the manufacturer's stuff. They want to use the product that they bought and paid for in the manner that they were able to when they bought and paid for the product. But that's not good enough for manufacturers nowadays. They have to exercise full control over what it is you bought and paid for. I've gone over this here on the Consumer Action Task Force Wiki, which features Mr. Clinton the cat. And this is pretty much a very, very long description of all these different things. If you are an expert in 3D printing, I humbly and kindly ask that you help me make this page as good as humanly possible. Clinton the cat insists. Good boy. As part of our ongoing commitment to enhance the overall security of our products, we are introducing an authorization and authentication protection mechanism for connection and control of the Bamboo Lab 3D printers. This step is a significant security enhancement to ensure only authorized access and operations are permitted. The change is mitigating any risk of remote hacks or printer exposure issues that have happened in the past and also lower the risk of abnormal traffic or attacks. These updates will introduce authorization controls that require official authorization for critical printer operations. Furthermore, unauthorized third-party software will be prohibited from executing critical operations. Who the fuck are you to tell me what I'm authorized to do with my own fucking printer? I'm like, did you hire the people that decided that your HP printer scanner faxer will not be able to scan if you don't have ink in your printer? Critical operations that require authorization. The following printer operations will require authorization controls. Binding and unbinding the printer, initiating remote video access, performing firmware upgrades, initiating a print job via LAN or cloud mode. Even in LAN mode, which is not cloud, it will require authorization. Controlling a motion system, temperatures, fans, AMS settings, calibrations, etc. The fact that anything on a product that does not need to be connected to the cloud needs authorization to work, why? I mean, I guess you guys know why at this point. Responses from the community. Hello, Bamboo Labs team. I've always supported you and truly admire your work, but this decision with new author is deeply disappointing. Orca Slicer is essential for me, as is managing my BL prints through Home Assistant. With multiple printers, more than 20, manually exporting models and transfer them to another program every time is an absolute nightmare. While I understand the importance of security, you must find a way to implement these measures without dismantling the existing functionality, such as Orca Slicer and third-party software integration. These tools should have access to authorization options. If you completely block Orca Slicer, it would mean Bamboo Labs printers are no longer a viable option for me. You've demonstrated great responsiveness in the past. Think of the X1 Plus situation, so why act so differently now? Please listen to your community. There are over 270 comments here on Reddit. None in favor of your decision. And revise your plans if you do. We'll continue to stand behind you and support your innovations. If not, I'm afraid no more Bamboo Labs printers to me. Maybe I'm just paranoid, but with LAN only mode enabled for authentication too, I have a gut feeling something eventually is going to be subscription based. Ding, ding, ding. You want to use our software to see and use your printer? Pay us money. And if not, then print using SD card only. If you're in LAN mode only, it's your responsibility to have network security, not theirs. From Square3D. Adverse impacts of abnormal requests. Increased system load. Middleware components experience elevated loads, leading to abnormal restarts and disruptions to online operators. Degraded service performance. Backend service latency has increased significantly, adversely affecting the experience of normal users. Login system failures. The high frequency of login attempts has triggered multiple failures in the cloud login components, cumulatively disrupting normal logins for users for approximately one hour and impacting the ability of users to access services. Don't force users into your cloud and instead let them manage peer to peer connections. Almost all of those software degradation problems arise from your cloud system. It should not be the user who paid for the hardware to be restricted. I agree. 
I know about land mode, but as has been stated by many people, things like the camera will not work, nor will the handy app. There is no technical reason that these are bound to the cloud. I currently use land only mode and don't use the software at all. I run custom scripts and Orca to do all my printing. When this new firmware is forced on me, us, our entire workflow will break and I'll be forced to use their buggy apps to use bamboo printers, which will be horrible. This is a really bad business decision. They're trying to lock people into their system under the guise of security. Orca Slicer, a piece of software that people who love bamboo printers use. Is there an existing issue for this feature request? Bamboo will brick Orca Slicer for XP and A series. Another piece of proprietary blob from Bamboo Connect will be required and will need to be called using a URL scheme. Any and all Bamboo users should immediately complain to Bamboo Labs as this virtually takes full control over what you can do with your printer. Do not update to 1.08.03.00 if you rely, like myself, on Orca Slicer until Bam support for Bamboo Connect has been added. You will not be able to use this unauthorized thing. I hate the word unauthorized, it makes me sick. Jessa Jones at iPad Rehab had an excellent alternative to this word. She used to call it branded repair branded sales rather than unauthorized repair. Because the word unauthorized repair, when I'm saying that unauthorized people should have the ability to work on those products, I'm accepting the premise of assholes by even using that word in implying that I can or cannot have authorization to work on what I bought and paid for. That I need to be authorized by the manufacturer to be able to work on what it is you bought and paid for. The only person who gets to decide whether or not I am authorized to work on their property is the property owner. And that is not the manufacturer after you've bought and paid for it. The problem with this is that even if you upgrade to the new firm and want to go back, you can't. It's a one-way thing. It's like IO. You cannot downgrade to a different version of the firmware that gives you freedom. And some people may say, why don't you just stay in the firmware that you have now? But this brings us back to the original message over here. Due to the importance of these updates, your product may block a new print job before the updates is installed. Not to be King Stannis in Game of Thrones here. Even if you don't want to update to the new version, they're telling you right here what may happen. The idea that every single time I want to do one of these jobs that requires authorization from you, I have to connect to your server, is also pretty bad for privacy concerns. As I write here on the Consumer Protection Wiki, Consumer Action Task Force, I know, I, I can't call it the CP Wiki. I, I can't call it the CP Wiki. Uh, this is on my Consumer Action Task Force Wiki. The shift towards mandatory use of Bamboo's software ecosystem raises several privacy and data collection concerns. All printer operations must now pass through Bamboo's cloud infrastructure when using cloud mode. User print data, including file names and print settings, become visible to Bamboo. Camera feeds and operational data are processed through Bamboo servers. Users have limited visibility in how their data is collected, stored, and used, and the system creates dependence on Bamboo's cloud services for basic printer functionality. While Bamboo Lab maintains that cloud processing is necessary for security and functionality, Community members and customers and the people that know what the fuck they're talking about argue that this represents unnecessary data collection that could be handled locally. The company's cloud infrastructure costs are significant, leading some users to speculate that future monetization of the cloud services may also be planned. So this is one of those things where people will say, you can't expect them to keep the servers up forever when you just paid for the game once, right? You're the fucker that decided to require that I connect to your services to use your product. Therefore, the responsibility and accountability is on you. I, I, I could see it now, like three or five or 10 years from now, this turns off, this product no longer works. You can't expect them to keep the server on forever, you entitled person. What are you, poor? Buy a new one. You're the fucker that decided to require that I connect to your server for the product to work. Communication with Orca Slicer developers, a piece of software that people who use this Bamboo Labs product love using, as you can see from all the forum feedback. Before the official announcement of the new authorization and authentication, Bamboo Lab engaged with the Orca Slicer development team regarding the changes. The communication has sparked significant discussion within the 3D printing community, particularly regarding its timing, tone, and implications. Reports from Orca Slicer demonstrate that Bamboo Lab provided limited advance notice of the changes that would render their software incompatible with Bamboo printers running a new firmware. The introduction of Bamboo Connect is the only supported method for interacting with third-party slicers, the discontinuation of the network plugin API that Orca Slicer and other tools relied on for printer control, and an invitation for Orca Slicer developers to adapt their software to integrate with the Bamboo Connect URL scheme. The communication lacked the detailed technical documents that would be necessary for developers to be able to work with the new requirements, particularly within the time frame that they were given. The decision to restrict network APIs in favor of proprietary systems such as Bamboo Connect represents a broader industry trend of closing off ecosystems that were once open, removing customer choice, privacy, and freedom. You bought this printer because it was advertised as being able to be utilized in a particular way. The manufacturer has released firmware that fundamentally changes everything that you thought you could do with this printer and how you could use that printer when you first bought it. And that's supposed to be okay. You bought the product with these terms. The terms of the sale have now changed. Pray that they don't alter them further.
This is called changing the terms of the sale after the sale. If you wanted to sell this product as having a closed off ecosystem, you should have advertised it that way when you sold the fucking product. But no, you have this product selling at a low price to get a bunch of people hooked on it. And then once a bunch of people get hooked on that product, you take away their ability to use it in the manner that they want, which at the end of the day would not even be as horrible if you didn't have this fucking bullshit in your terms over here. Due to the importance of these updates, your product may block a new print job before the updates are installed. I'm not a fan of the new updates. I don't like it but at the very least give users the option to not install them and still have a functioning product. The fact that you've put that in there tells me everything that I need to know about you as a business. You don't care about security. In my opinion, all you give a fuck about is controlling your users and forcing them into your bullshit ecosystem. Printer companies nowadays, whether we are talking about 3D printers or basic paper printers, are run by, in my opinion, pieces of shit. You have people who are literally telling you with a straight face that this printer that has a scanner built into it will not scan if the ink is empty. And by the way, HP is a company that routinely has tried to block people from using third-party ink cartridges. This is the end result of this type of shit. There are people in these Reddit threads saying, this is not bricking, it's not the end of the world. It's the start. And I get it, there's that slippery slope fallacy, the correlation does not mean causation. When it comes to issues of ownership and consumer protection in 2025, correlation means causation a lot of the time. Bamboo, stop fucking your users. Allow them to use your product in the manner that it was advertised when they originally bought and paid for it. It is not your product anymore, and you are not the one that can authorize or unauthorize them from using a piece of software the way they want on their own fucking printer. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. Do you want to use a printer that requires that you connect to the manufacturer so their server can see exactly what it is you're printing on your device? If I were a user of this product, I would not have to want to redo my entire workflow because you tried to force me into your ecosystem. And I sure as fuck would not want to be forced into using your server and having all of my print data of exactly what I'm making made available to you. Nah, man, that's not it. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. Remember, the Consumer Action Task Force Wiki. This is my main project nowadays. I'm freeing up as much time as I can so we can contribute as much of this as possible. We already have people that are kicking my ass in the early days. I was, uh, yeah, I used to be number one ranked here. Now I'm number three. Shout out to Waldo. Shout out to Costa. Shout out to Keith who have been killing it. Keith not only has been doing a lot with making changes and making things better, but he was also essential and crucial as ChatGPT would say in the early days because... It's no fucking two words ChatGPT likes more than essential and crucial to creating all the frameworks, the moderator guidelines, and really forcing me to think through all these things and write it out before releasing it that have been incredibly important moving forward. Costas with the constant fucking edits. I mean, this guy is up at fucking three in the morning correcting shit in articles, adding new stuff. It's just amazing. And Waldo, like, holy shit, look at how much he... Bruh, he caught up big in the last one day. Like, Waldo wasn't anywhere on the charts before today. Look at this. This mofo made it into the top 10 in one day. Help me build this out. Sponsor block people, for all the sponsor block people watching this, this entire list is designed to make it untenable for YouTubers to sponsor scamming shit companies. Because if they're sponsoring a company that's on their list, my hope is that their audience pushes back against it. You guys don't like when companies are sponsored or advertised that are scams. Help me document every single working instance of these companies being scammers. There's a how to help link on the homepage. Please check out the how to help page on the homepage. Click on that, read through, read through the mission statement, read through the how to help, and help me turn this into the best consumer protection database of the 21st century. The only source that you can go to to find every single instance of a company trying to take away your right to repair, take away your ability you say that you own what you bought and paid for, change the terms of the sale, force you into forced arbitration, and fuck you over like Bamboo is trying to do to their users. I can't do it without you. Help make this channel the most brand unsafe channel on YouTube. You want to make sure that there's never a sponsor here? The more popular this gets, the less likely that is. This channel has one sponsor and one sponsor only. Clinton the Cat. I can't, uh, I can't pet it over here because that's where all the, the bone is degraded. I can pet him over here? Here, I can't pet you. I can just put my hand there a little bit. Barely tap, barely tap, because he likes it. I can't hurt his bone.
Oh, yeah. Should I give him a treat? Maybe I give him a treat. He didn't even knock over the HD home run. Andy? Hey. I have a microphone to fix.